What's going on, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Breaking Point series here on F123. It's been a couple days since I've uh, filmed one of these videos. We actually got stuck on the Chapter 7 bug that a lot of people were encountering, where you would get to the grid here for the Bahrain Grand Prix uh, to start the 2023 season, and the race just would not start. So thankfully, EA has finally fixed that bug, um, at least for me. And I'm able to proceed with the race. So we're kicking things off here. If you remember from last time back in Chapter 6, we ended off the 2022 season with Casper Ackerman coming back to helm the team uh, alongside uh, the owner of Connor Sport. And Aiden Jackson was about to tell the team that he was leaving. And he decided, uh, you know what? I think I'm going to stay. So it looks like we've actually flipped the script a little bit. And we're playing as Devin Butler, which is a nice, you know, change of scenery. See how he interacts with 2023. And I kind of got the feeling in the later stages of chapter five and six that there might be something going on behind the scenes with Devin Butler. That might be a reason for why he puts on this, you know, persona of such a, a an evil character that so many people uh, don't. Uh, aren't fancy of, so to speak. So we're going to kick things off here. Bahrain Grand Prix for the very first season or sorry, for the very first race of season 23, playing as Devin Butler. So let's kick things off, get started, uh, and see the introduction it's for Bahrain Grand Prix. Our drivers are all out on the grid, performing their final checks before we get underway here at the Bahrain International Circuit. We go racing today around the 3.36 miles of the magnificent Bahrain International Circuit, with 15 corners and two good passing opportunities into turns one and four. Keep an eye out for drivers locking the front left tire into the tricky braking zone of turn 10. So with the race not far away from starting, here's what today's grid rundown looks like. Max Verstappen put in a fantastic lap yesterday, and he'll start from pole position. And it's Charles Leclerc in P2. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Fernando Alonso, Russell, Perez, Hamilton, Sainz, Stroll, Ocon, Norris, Albon, Oscar Piastri, Jackson, Gasly, Sonoda, Butler, Bottas, Sargent, Joe, Magnussen, De Vries, and Nico Hülkenberg rounds off the grid. And with lights out just moments away, it's time to go down to the track. 2023 Bahrain. We're about to get going, and I hope you've enjoyed the build-up just as much as we have. The teams are ready on the grid. They're ready in the garages too, but in the commentary box alongside me, are you ready, Ant? Of course I'm ready, Crofty. New season, new challenges for all of them out there, drivers and teams. I love this part of the year, Crofty. This is where it really kicks off, and you get to showcase all that hard work you've done through the winter months. Does it pay off? Yeah, that's the question, isn't it? What does the 2023 season have in store for us? We're about to find out. All right, so welcome back to the grid here, okay, guys. Devin, it's a brand new season, you know that, so let's start it as we mean to go on, OK? OK, let's get out there, come on. All right, so you heard it. So it's a brand new season playing as uh, Devin Butler, and it looks like Aiden Jackson, again, has outqualified us in position 13. We're starting in P16. Uh, I'm assuming the team wants to sit to get quite a bit higher result than that. So a couple strategy options. The, the default one it has us on here is mediums for six laps, followed by eight laps on the soft, or we could go seven laps on the soft, or we, you know, we can obviously uh, try these out. But I think what we're going to do is we're going to stay on the default strategy. I'm going to assume a lot of people are starting on the softs. So by starting on the mediums, you know, we're in the Connor Sport car, in 2022, it felt like the car was pretty quick. Uh, I don't know what's going to change. Again, we're in a brand new season in this story mode. Um, but being on the mediums, I feel like I can push a little bit harder uh, on these tires at the beginning and then hopefully round off on a nice soft compound uh, later on in the race. So the true 2023 um, lineup is here. You see all the, the people on the grid that we're used to seeing with the exception of Nick DeVries actually just lost his seat to uh, Daniel Ricardo, which was massive news. I'm super excited for the Hungarian race as we clip the back end. Nearly wreck here before, uh, yeah, that was definitely a mistake of nobody but myself here. Almost run into the back of Stroll, so it's been a little bit since I've recorded. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this right up front here, the car of Connor Sports in season two of this story, if you will, the 2020 
three season car definitely doesn't feel as good as the last one so it's gonna be something that we're gonna have to keep an eye on again we're starting on the medium compounds a lot of people back in the far parts of the grid where we were were on the soft so definitely not the the cleanest start there bumping into the back Vocon. thankfully no wing damage from us and it didn't look like we really set him back too much either he's gonna have to pick up the pace here our objective is finish in the top five bonus podium yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how this season develops with uh, with Devin Butler being the uh, the focus here to start things off. Got to remember, Callie Mayer finished up her F2 season as the first female champion of that league, so she'll probably look to get somewhere slotted in, I'm going to guess, at some point. So we still got a little bit of pace. It just feels a little bit more, I don't know, a little bit less responsive here in the early goings of this uh, this race, but a nice overtake there on Piastri. That was a much safer overtake than what we had on Ocon. Okay, you're in the top 10. Yeah, there's been a whole bunch of bugs in this game, ladies and gentlemen, so again, I really wanted to get this video series going a lot quicker because I've been really enjoying the story mode. But uh, there was a bug preventing me from moving on from this chapter. I couldn't start it. So that was major issue number one. The issue I'm facing with in my team career right now is the replays are uh, being corrupted. If you save them before the new game, pat like a, a patch for the game comes out, it corrupts your files. So that's been uh, obviously not fun to deal with. So working with that, trying to get the my team career videos edited and not having the replay to see what happens in the races. Oh, a little bit of oversteer there. and Wheels locked up on me. A little bit too quick on the throttle for that one. I'm going to look to dive on the inside of Norris here. Beautiful overtake if we can stick it. Yep, he's going to get swept on the inside by Perez as well. So pretty aggressive here, but in the career mode, we've uh, we've learned from previous chapters that you got to be a little bit aggressive here because the AI definitely don't give you a lot to work with on the harder difficulty. Yeah, the car feels... I like, like I'm sure a lot of people have said with their 2023 car, just a little bit sluggish compared to last year. Obviously, we, did, we only played a handful of chapters in that 2022 car, and a lot of them came in the later stages of the year where the car was obviously more developed. So we have signs now up in six. And then our target of Lewis Hamilton, two seconds up the road. That is the fastest lap with a beautiful Sector 3 there. Purple Sector 3, an unbelievable final part of that. We're going to try and go around the outside. No, not enough room there. Got DRS open now. But the concern that I had going into the 2023 game was the bugs that we saw in last year's game. It's the fastest purple sector and it was pretty sloppy. But uh, looks like there's dealing with some pretty bad bugs here to kick this game off. Uh, we're about a month into this game now, maybe a little bit over a month. I don't actually remember. Ooh! Very aggressive overtake there. Break really late. I actually had a left tire lockup. I don't know if you saw that in the uh, rear view mirror there. <laughs> that was uh, a little bit a little bit of a, a, a gross overtake, but driving pretty well now, kind of eased into this car. We see Alonzo up there in third. That's uh, the bonus objective, but I mean for us, we're we're not too far off from Verstappen. It looks like Leclerc is actually leading this race now from uh, from the Red Bull man there. The two Mercedes in the black this year. Okay, that is another fastest go. lap. So we're doing a good job here just to uh, try and put some good laps together. We'll do a much safer overtake here. Double overtake on both the Mercs there. Beautiful. They both slip to the outside. We have the inside line braked at the appropriate time to not miss that braking zone there. That was a beautiful overtake. We're going to look to do a similar thing here on the inside of Alonso. Brake late. Slip in behind him. Get on the 
and we'll just squeeze them out on the outside. So got on the throttle at a good time there. That was another purple sector. That one was probably the best one. Well, I mean, it clearly is, but that was the best one that felt like the best one. Because last purple sector one didn't feel like we drove all that well. Now we have Leclerc and Verstappen, who has squeaked past Leclerc on that pitch straight with the DRS flap. In our sights, 14 laps in this race here, guys. Probably the longest one pending any issues. Obviously, they have those in-career cinematics that tend to happen throughout the race. We're hoping for not, not as many of those this year as obviously Connor Sports dealt with a lot of a lot of reliability issues in, in the first season of this career mode. Story mode, if you will. I guess it's not really a, necessarily a career mode. So we're about five tenths, nearly six tenths off from Leclerc here. We should get DRS open and make a move onto the Monogast man. And then hopefully uh, put some pressure onto Verstappen, but we're driving a beautiful race there. If you can see on the mini-map, it looks like our teammate Aiden Jackson is struggling early here in the first race of the season. But unfortunately for us, Leclerc was on the back of Verstappen there for the DRS, so we were unable to catch him on that lap. A little bit of oversteer there. He's the tire spun with a, a little bit too much a little too fast on the throttle with that one. But it'll be a, a whole other... Uh, it'll be very interesting to see what happens if we continue to play as Devin Butler because I felt like Aiden Jackson was the stronger driver but was not in a position where he was the driver that was getting the correct treatment. But I don't know, there was something about chapter five and six where you heard Devin Butler say a few things. We're right on the back of Leclerc now. I just feel like I, I get the impression that there's some more going on with Devin than, than he led on, like behind the scenes, whether it's issues with his, his family, like his dad, obviously his dad being part of the team. It's a great overtake there with the deer. Oh, a slap, I almost lost it there. Talking and driving is actually very difficult, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I almost lost the entire race right there, but that was a nice overtake from uh, from the Ferrari there. Or on the Ferrari, but yeah, I don't know. We'll have to see how this plays out, but I just feel like there's something going on with Devin. Not quite in the one second range here of Verstappen. Leclerc is going to get his DRS flap open. We are in the pit window now. We're going on a sauce, remember, so I'm going to slip clear to the outside and maintain it doesn't look like he's gonna make a move around the outside on us so gave him the window decided oh man whoo I'm getting some back tire spin here early in Bahrain my word I've almost lost the back end two or three times now Very interesting. I don't know if it's just because we're still early in this race or what. There hasn't been any snarky radio comments from Devin Butler, so who knows? New Year, maybe a, a new Devin Butler, although I can't imagine that. I just noticed this Twitter handle on my inside of the halo there, <laughs> the real Devin Butler. We have the Diros flapping open now. I'm going to drain a little bit of the battery here and see if we can't make a move on to Verstappen. Oh, he was he was early breaking there. He doubt, Yeah, that's a great switchback move there by Verstappen. So, I mean, not, uh, not at least surprising, at all surprising. Granted, Verstappen, we're talking about the uh, the reigning world champion. Oh my, oh my, he broke early there and then just had a beautiful switchback. That actually scared me. I thought I was going to run run into the back of him there. Talked about it before, but playing this breaking point series. Uh, we're going to pit here early on his sauce, I think. Five second penalty for speeding? Are you kidding me? I swear to God that said I was at 79. Well, we're going to have some work cut out for us here now, ladies and gentlemen. Good thing we're going on to the softs. Anyway, what I was saying is when I record the My Team Career, um, I record it and then I voice over it. For this one, I drive well while recording, so it's a little bit of a different feel. So we have some work for us here now. We get out behind Aiden and Veltri, but uh, 
on the soft compounds. New sauce. Should make quick work of both of these guys here. I mean, we're just so much quicker than both of these gentlemen. To make a move on uh, Aiden here as well. Oh, nearly run into the back of him. Aiden cut that corner, so maybe a little bit of animosity towards his uh, his rival and teammate. He does the same thing there. That is another break check by our teammate. So this is not what we need, Aiden. I need you to get out of the way. Sorry, pal. I am not playing as you anymore, so. <laughs> Need to look out for dip. Damn, I'm actually surprised. I may have actually got some wing damage. No, surprising I didn't get any wing damage. I'm not quite sure if the campaign, like the story mode, plays on simulation da uh, damage, but I got to imagine that... Uh, I got to imagine that that would have been, if it was simulation damage, that would have been a, a damage front wing. I don't know if I hit him hard enough to break off the end plate, but that was a little bit of a gross uh, issue I had there. So living up to the Devin Butler name. Who am I kidding? That's something that he would have uh, gladly done to us in the last couple uh, chapters of last year, but speeding in the pit, kind of frustrating. We're going to have to play extremely well here to, um, to get that one back. We could do come out ahead of Verstappen, so beautiful, uh, beautiful last sector of that lap to gain. But we're gonna have to gain what? Five seconds back just to just to win this race now. But we came out three and a half seconds above him now, nearly up to four and a half. So our, I'm surprised Verstappen. I guess he may have started on the mediums. Or sorry, sauce. So good strategy by our uh, pit crew because I think the softs are going to be the tire that works out the best here. Is we're setting real fast sectors now, which is good because we have that five-second penalty to deal with. We make quick work of the Aston Martin of Lance Stroll here. Car feels good. Uh, it's I don't think it's as snappy as last year, like I said. And I don't know if that's just the driver of Aiden Jackson just felt really good. If that even matters in the story mode, but feeling really nice. We are six seconds ahead of Verstappen, so he is struggling to fire up those uh, medium compounds. Is That's kind of what we did as well. On that first lap, I felt pretty gross with, uh, with those mediums, so... Perez, Hamilton, they both pit. So we are now fastest laps, purple sector one and three. Beautiful lap there. Russell's still out on the softs. I got to imagine that he is already pitted. Or hasn't pitted, apologies. And again, he is on the softs. So if he hasn't pitted, he's going for a pretty long stint one with those. A little bit of a sluggish sector here but just trying to minimize mistakes I've already made so many in this that you know bumping the back end of Ocon on turn one having the incident with Aiden which isn't at all surprising granted the history with those two and the five seconds speeding in the pits I should have seen the replay that that had to have been super close I swear it said I was at 79 when I crossed that line, but it had to have been ultra close. I don't even remember the last time I had a speeding in the pit late incident. Might be the first one of this game. First for everything, I guess. A little aggressive over that curb. Russell doing a really nice job here. I mean, if he has pitted, it's going to be tough for me to catch him. And there he goes in the pit. So after all is said and done, we will be the leader of the Bahrain Grand Prix with a nine second cushion over Verstappen here. So the Connor Sports, again, ladies and gentlemen, I am not playing on expert. I am not playing on the hardest difficulty. This is just a casual, normal playthrough of the Breaking Point 2 series. Definitely don't want to stress while playing it. We're playing on, whoa! We're playing on the hardest difficulty for uh, my team career, so. <laughs> 
Didn't want to stress too much while playing this and experiencing it. But we have... Technically, we have a four-second cushion now because of the... penalty we've picked up. I just realized the game so talked about it a little bit earlier all the bugs that i've been encountering with this game lately with the replays with this this game not letting me pass chapter seven um or letting me start chapter seven i am using the logitech g29 that is my steering wheel it's nothing fancy it's the only one i got right now uh and i just realized starting this game back up after about five days of not playing it look at the buttons it thinks i'm using an xbox controller which is hilarious because i don't even own an xbox controller anymore <laughs> just a lot of issues i find with i mean it's been a couple content creators i know this isn't the space to be talking about it right now but there's been a couple content creators that have been talking about how much of the f1 world has been a flop because like nobody plays it which is unfortunate because i think it's a good design but i really am enjoying this breaking point series too i think it is a uh I mean, the first breaking point was a hell of a lot of fun, and I think they've expanded and made this into a pretty solid story when it works. I don't know, just this game being under the EA umbrella scares me now. I just think there's gonna be a lot of bugs that will never get fixed until the next game, but then the next game is gonna introduce a lot of bugs as well. That just seems to be the, uh, the ideal release schedule and calendar cadence, whatever you wanna call it, of EA, and it's frustrating, but let's focus up. Not out of the not out of the woods yet. We have a good race going here. Devin's kept calm. I've been a little too quick on the throttle right now. I should I've lo almost lost this back end multiple times. We have three laps left. We know what kind of uh, reliability issues. I'm really hoping, I mean, again, I have no idea what's going to happen in this story. I have no idea who's going to be the drivers at the end of the entire thing. But I really hope that the car uh, has less reliability issues in season two of this story mode because, my God, watching, uh, I mean, it comes back to the one where Aiden pulls into the pits and they don't even have four tires ready for him. It's like... When you have a car that's already unreliable and then you have a pit crew that just can't seem to figure it out, that's that's a tough look for, for a brand new team. And I got to think that the uh, the eyes of the, that, you know, the F1 world is going to be on them. They're, they're a team joining late into, into the, the 11th team on the grid. They want to keep their spot on the grid. They're going to have to perform, so... I love drifting in this game. I know you shouldn't because it wrecks your tires. Our tires, are here, and these are sauce. But man, drifting in this game is so much fun. That's why I love the like, in my team career, the uh, the, the drift for the kick things off <laughs> on race weekends. Like that is so much fun. Very dangerous. You should definitely not, I do not recommend it, but. Okay, we've got four laps of fuel remaining. Car feels good. Looks like Leclerc is caught right up to Verstappen. So I don't think the mediums. I gotta give credit to the uh, the engineer here on the race strategy because he said, "Whoa!" Snap of uh, a oversteer there off that curb. But uh, he recommended starting on the mediums and then ending on the softs. And I, it took me a couple laps to warm up those mediums, and they did not feel good right through the entire stint one. So I think you're seeing some of the teams that are on the mediums now that did the reverse strategy are struggling a little bit. Although I'll tell you, Verstappen has just put a second on us there again. We're in a pretty safe cushion here, driving in clean air with a pretty nice car under very soft difficulty. But... I kind of wish there was an AI slider in the game mode other than just, you know, normal to hard or whatever the, the settings were because I feel like this might be a little bit undertuned. But again, I'm doing it for the experience of the story, not for the racing necessarily. Oh, we got some uh, marbles on our front left tile that 
tire there, so must have pushed those up when we went off the road a little bit. Just want to keep an eye on that. Probably should stop drifting, to be honest with you, and just ease off the pedal. battery to to work with here actually i might save it for the final lap and just see if we can somehow beat our fastest time i mean we have what eight seven lap old soft tires we have 54 percent of the battery we'll probably have a little bit of more of that by the end of this lap see if we can't push push and uh get a fast lap 134.6 almost 134.7 can probably look to challenge that a little bit get up to speed here quickly and then use it all throughout sector two tires are uh, still okay but oh I don't I do not have the tires for a fast slap right here I don't even think it's going to be remotely close to that time. I don't think it's going to be close to that 134, but I, we have achieved all of our objectives. We have finished inside the top three, about to win the race. We have finished inside the top five, and we currently hold the fastest lap. So with the five-second penalty, we're going to come across. Devin Butler is going to win the Bahrain Grand Prix to kick off season two of Breaking Point 2. Plenty of surprises in the midfield. So where do we start, at? Well, I think we have to look at Connor Sport. And for me, they've been the biggest surprise so far. And Butler, he's doing fantastically well. Thing is, though, they've got to sustain that over the course of the whole season. And that is easier said than done. Certainly what Kasper Ackerman will be hoping that this season is better than his last. Here comes your top three making their way down to the podium for what can only be described as a fantastic day for Formula One. Well, as always, I guess congrats to Devin Butler, but we have our post-race questions. Uh, and, I mean, we flipped the switch. I know what I responded to with these as Aiden Jackson, you know, being a little bit more reserved, a little bit more team-oriented. But we are playing as one Devin Butler. We know he doesn't care about the team, let's be honest here. It just comes so naturally to me. The season I, I get to drive a car that works and I smash it, I've got to secure my reputation as in one of the all-time greatest. It just comes naturally to me. That's one of his snarky responses yeah, he would do. it just comes so naturally to me. I don't really think Exactly. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm not saying it wasn't impressive. I mean, you seem impressed. I'm, I'm sure others do too, and rightfully so. I'm just saying that it was actually pretty easy for me today. Well, you've had your share of run-ins in the past for teammate Aiden Jackson. Crucial question is, is that behind you? How do you feel about him right now? 
See, here, here's, here's the thing. Even when I know, and I pick the answer that I know will suit Devin Butler, I, it still amazes me how well this game makes me hate the man. That response just peeved me off. Uh, but anyway, we have some options here for about uh, Aiden Jacks. Can't choose uh, attitude problem because we're not level four yet. I think we could become good friends, but he ignores me. Aiden is too serious. You can't have any fun with him. I think that's probably better than the other one. Fine. Look, the main difference between me and Aiden is I know how to take a joke. I personally want him to perform at his best. But whenever I try to give him just a little, a little friendly advice, he takes it so personally. I mean, he, he is a very difficult man to have a conversation with. He's all right, you know, he's, he's cool, but uh, he's just he's very serious. Well, Connor Sport surprised everyone by appointing Casper Ackerman as team principal this season. So how do you feel about taking orders from someone that you've got such a history with? Oh, I mean, we got to we got to go with we know we know for a fact Casper does not like Devin Butler from the previous Breaking Point series. However, he is working for the team. He knew what he, he got when he signed up for it. But this is such a perfect Devin Butler response. I'm sure he's thankful to have me. We're definitely choosing that I one. I think he's going to do a terrific job, you know? Uh, mainly because he's got me on his team, so uh, he can't go too far <laughs> wrong. Now, I'm sure he's incredibly thankful to have me as a driver. Well, you're embarking on a new year, but what would a successful season look like for you in 2023? See, this, this answer right here is what I think is the underlying issue with everything we've seen from Devin Butler. Impressing Davidoff or Davidoff. That's his dad. I feel like there's something going on there. I'm going to choose it. It seems like I feel like this would be like a slip of, of an answer that also is like the real reason behind it all. If my dad thinks I've driven one good race by the end of the season, I'll consider myself a massive success. Oof. No, serious, seriously. <laughs> he's, he's a difficult man to please, and uh, we've got to do our best to keep him happy. So, yeah. One good race, according to the old man. Can it be done? Watch this space. That's yeah. Great. Thank you. I don't know. Something seems a little amiss at home. That is actually a sad video right there, or a response. We'll be interested to see how it plays out. I mean, he's not wrong. His dad is, uh, is the money behind this whole operation. So chapter seven, post-race. Devin starts the season in fantastic form with an impressive result. Connor Sports insecure. Great race out there today, just in the highlights. Listen, I know we've had our run-ins and, well, last season was last season. Fresh start for the team. What do you say? Huh, oh, Jackson. Yeah. Cheers, mate. Bin's over there. Yeah. Nice one. How about the season just gone? The 2023 season was completely different for Connorsport. How so? But, uh, the car, for one. We'd ironed out the most critical issues and it was just starting to live up to its potential. Can we talk about what happened with Devon? Well, that there is without a shred of doubt now that sums up the fact that there is something going on with Devin, whether his father is so far in his head that he is suffering mentally from it. But that was a very interesting and critical moment in this career mode, in this story mode. Aiden Jackson trying to put, you know, the past past is the past. Let bygones be bygones. And interact with Devin Butler on a professional level. And when it switched to Devin's perspective, all he heard was basically static noise ringing. He didn't even hear Aiden Jackson a little bit. And then now you see the boss saying from the perspective that this season is now complete. And the issue was there was an issue with Devin. We don't know what that issue is yet, but that is very, very interesting. 
And I'm almost starting to feel bad for the poor guy. I mean, like I said, anytime he talks to the media, I, I just want to smack him. But there's something going on here. So we got the Bahrain roundup. Unpredictable start this season. Here we go. What do we got? Here's the old man. Yeah, what is it? Now that's how a butler takes care of business. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. Carrying the team, Devon, as well as the butler name. I couldn't be happier. Yeah, yeah, went well. Well? <laughs> I can't wait to hear what those clowns Ackerman and Connor have to say. Yeah. Hmm? You okay, Devon? What? Oh, yeah, I'm fine. I'm, uh, just adrenaline, Dad. I just, I really pushed it out there today, you know? I just need to simmer down a bit. Of course you do. Let's talk later. I'll be in meetings, but so call me whenever you like. I'm proud of you, son. Let's just make sure today's result isn't just a one-off. Eh? Yeah. All right, all right. Ciao. Ugh. <sighs> I'm so conflicted because I'm getting the same vibes that I got from when we were playing as Aiden Jackson that I feel like Davidoff is just saying all this just to say it. But there's so, there, like either the issue isn't with his dad, which part of it seems like it is. But that conversation, it almost felt like he was checked out from his dad as well. So it's it's I don't know. It seems like a it almost. Yeah, something's going on and it's just it's crazy. We have some emails here. Casper says he's humble. I knew Connor Sports were good, but that was something else. You have so much to say to the debrief in a department. So he's saying, oh, come on now. Could you slow down a little bit next time I'm settling in and couldn't keep up? Seriously, thank you. I've got a lot of people looking over my shoulder right now. So, I mean... Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. What's this? An update on the car issue. Looks like I'm not going to have to get legal involved after all. The insurance are happy to pay the claim for the damage to the bodywork. Whoa, so. You got in a car accident outside the track. Oh man, there is some, there's some underlying issues here, but that is going to be it for chapter seven. As always, we're moving on to chapter eight. Hopefully we don't have any bugs that prevents us from moving on. My gosh, there's something crazy going on in this story. Chapter eight coming up next. And why not? Australian Grand Prix, several weeks later, so we've skipped over Jetta. Chapter 8, a strong start to the season for Connor Sport has the team in high spirits as the paddock heads to the Mel to Melbourne for the Australian Grand Prix. So Albert Park Circuit up next. Uh, we're going to have to see what's in store for uh, for Butler here. F2 star, superstar Kelly Mayer definitely achieved to set out to do too quickly just because they're not visible. Yes, daily routine certainly looks like. Formula 1 in the simulator most days. So she's in the simulator for, I'm assuming, Connor Sport. It hasn't really said. A bright turnaround. Many would argue that Casper Ackerman. Yeah, 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 yeah. Looking at the 2022 Albert Park track updates. Oh, is this a 2022 season? Were we in 2020? No, we're in 2023 now. I'm so confused. So good to see Ackerman back. So people are happy. Have a good race day. We know Ackerman's cracked it. We chat with different brother. Hot season. So kind of seems like a lot of the talk is on Connor Sports and on Ackerman and then very little is on the actual drivers which is kind of interesting can you come down to the garage early everything's running perfectly but we've had to make some last minute tweaks to the transmission let's keep it up boys we've had a great start yeah it seems like a lot of the um wait a minute whoa 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 whoa, whoa. private clinic something is going on with his health oh geez this just got Oh no, this just got, I think he's, I think he's ill. I think Devin might be ill. Oh man. Well, let's just see what happens. We're going to race here at Albert Park Circuit. And we're going to see what the heck happens from this point on. But I feel like uh, things are not in the greatest, greatest position for, uh, for Devin Butler. So maybe we got to go a little bit easier on him. Solid performance in qualifying has the team in good position at the Australian Grand Prix mid race. So it's not a full race here. Let's dive in, see if there's any introduction video. Here comes Butler. Good pace here down the straight. 
Into the corner we go. That's a little too late. And he nearly goes off the track on the exit. And is that a lapse in concentration? I think just a little bit of desperate driving there, Croft. He's pushing way too hard. I mean, there's nobody else around him at this stage. OK, Devon, we're going to have to ease off from the brakes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Brakes don't feel right. OK, we'll have a look at it, but you're going to see a drop off in performance, I'm afraid. What? Why? We've asked you to take it easy on the last lap, but pushing has made the issue even worse. So we're just going to have to live with it for now. What are you talking about? Listen, just do what you can, please, Devon. Come on. Oh, God. Something is definitely wrong. He can't hear a lot of the time. He's losing concentration. Hold on to as many positions as you can with brake issues. Oh, man. Something serious is going on with Devin Butler. Like, very, very serious. Oh, no, the brakes are horrible. Oh, my gosh. I almost feel like I have no juice in the brakes. Oh, no, this is horrible feeling. Battery charge is high. Let's use that overtake button a bit more. I don't want to. Oh, my gosh, the car feels so bad right now. It feels like there's, like, yeah, the battery's available, but it almost feels like the car has, like, no control right now. Wow, 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 wow. So, having to uh, really ease up into these corners, and this is not... A circuit you can really afford to do that with but I'm a little concerned for Devin to be honest feels like he's made himself an appointment at some sort of medical even that tiny corner felt like I couldn't break into it made himself an appointment at some sort of medical facility isn't paying attention to people can't hear or it, maybe it's not it might not have anything to do with hearing I don't know this is a uh, this whole story feels like it just hit a whole new level. And the concern is like very, very real. Who is Backmaker? Overtake Backmake Marker? Is that supposed to be Hulkenberg? <laughs> Who the heck is Backmarker? Oh my god, I have to break so much into these corners, dude. Yeah, the car is, uh, someone's with the issue, but I mean, we don't even know what it is because he couldn't hear his engineer. Like, he... We have Carlos Sainz, who's got the fastest lap going. Gasly. We're right behind Stroll and Ocon, though. If we can pass these guys and put some distance between us and Aiden, that's the ultimate goal. Aiden looks like he's fallen off a little bit. Having said that, what's... Is, is back marker a different word for a blue flag? I actually... I don't know why I said overtake back marker. <laughs> Could be a Formula One term. I've, I've been following Formula One for a while now, and I have no idea what that means. If it is a term that I'm... Oh my gosh, this car... Oh, I'm out of right lock up there as Stroll pass him. Breaking an extra gear basically on all these corners is very, very difficult. I talked about this circuit when I did it in my team career. I struggle on Elbert Park for some reason. It's not a circuit that I'm overly comfortable with. There are some changes to this circuit as well. Whoa, Stroll. These boys are jarring pretty hard right now. I was going to try an Aiden uh, Jackson like dive that we had in the first few chapters of this game, but unfortunately the car is not in a position to do that with Devin at the moment. Yeah, I mean, they've done a good job of, like, I don't know if the issues 
are with his hearing, if that's an issue, or if the issue is that he's ill and his mind is so taken away from driving right now that they're they're just trying to make that known with the ringing, but that was an aggressive overtake. It looks like Stroll got tangled up there with signs momentarily. Car seems to have maybe come alive a little bit here. We have a couple more laps to go. Caught on Ocon Zealus here. He's trying to press the Frenchman of Alpine to get ahead of him. Got the DRS flap now open. We're gonna make a lunge here into this corner. Beautiful, beautiful speed there by the car. So the top speed's not an issue. Braking still feels a little clunky, but we can uh, we can definitely make do with that. I think I think P7 is best as we can get. I can't see us closing, you know, four seconds up to Norris in two and a half laps now. Not even two and a half laps. Eh. I feel like I'm just having to break just slightly more than I'm, I'm wanting to. Not bad, not bad. Two more laps here, ladies and gentlemen. We got both those cars on the DRS train just hot on our heel. Aiden looks like he's falling right, way off. Got some marbles on the front left, but it, I mean, with how slow we're having to break into all these corners, I'm not too worried about tires at the moment. Whoa! Turn a little bit of battery here, see if we can't hang on with Carlos. Tries to go on the inside, we leave him enough room. Doesn't look like he's going to make a play for it. Got to be careful going around this turn that we don't bump into him, leave him enough room, and I should have slowed down because the car does not have enough braking capacity right now. Carlos goes to the inside. We're going to have to make a play around the outside here, break a little bit late, leave him enough room on the inside, get on the throttle early, and that is beautiful as he has to go up over the curb there. Loses some time with that one. Ooh, a little too quick on the throttle. Coming up to the final lap here, so, I mean, pending any issues... I'm getting worried for Devin though. I mean, it's that's a sa that's a safety risk at that point. Okay, mate. Final lap. Keep your concentration and let's bring it home. Almost lost it there. Is our back? I believe that was our back tire touched the grass. Yeah, just having to break a little bit more in this chapter is... It's tough. It's actually... You guys maybe... For those who maybe don't play these games or who do but haven't tried this, uh, if you get to okay, this chapter, ahead, it is two, tough because two, you're so... Seconds. Whoa. You're so used to, to breaking a certain amount when you've played a circuit for an extended period of time. Like, just because I'm not that comfortable in this circuit doesn't mean that I don't know the circuit. I know what I should be breaking and whatnot. It does feel really weird to have to almost break an extra. It's a good amount that I'm feeling like I'm having to put on the brake pedal. So good, good job on them. I mean, I don't know how they would have hooked that up, whether it would just been like, you know, programmed it so the car just feels clunkier in this race, or if it's just that the, the power getting to the braking system is a little more aggressively tuned in this race but hey we did a good job there we passed a couple people and uh we hold on for p7 that's a good race there we'll see what comes to the outcome of the, the post race for this one and that's the end of the race we'll see you in part fermi look this isn't the first time we've seen devon butler go road but the question is what are connor sport going to do about it well, it's really hard, as we've seen so many times before, Crofty, in the past, so hard to control your drivers. In a way, they're their own entity, but on the top of it, they're, they're working for the team, and that's what you want. It's a very hard situation to manage. And working for the team, Kasper Ackerman wanted to make a clean break for this year.
This does feel, though, that it's something that they might have had to have dealt with last season. It's really not what they wanted. A repeat of what happened in the past, and you cannot let it go on. It can't continue. They're just damaging the reputation of the team and their own reputation as well. They have to sort it out. I'm sure they'll be having words. So it's all changed here in Australia, and as the teams acclimatised to their new standings, so will we. The drivers are en route to the podium as we speak. What a fantastic win for the Red Bull team. They performed exceptionally today, keeping us firmly on the edge of our seats throughout the entirety of the race. Congratulations to everybody at the team. Now, Devon, you didn't respond to a team order today. In Hungary last season, you said it was a comms issue, but Connor Sport claimed they didn't know what that issue was. So, oh boy. something? What's really going on here? This is tough because clearly Devon has something going on. And in the media, I feel like he would uh, keep face. But since we are level four here, I'm going to just pick that option because I think it's the safest. Look, anything I say is going to be taken out of context. So I'd rather not fuel that kind of speculation. I'll debrief the team and we'll figure out how we can stop it happening again. That's that's all there is to it. Devon, you finished the race with a compromised car today. What was that like for you? Yeah, keep, keep on the Devon, you know? the Devon way um, of responding. It wasn't going as fast as we all wanted it to, but uh, well, you saw the race. Uh, I got the best out of a bad situation. That's just what you have to do sometimes. Now, some have been saying that you do get preferential treatment because Here we go. you're the that funds the team. What oh, you man, this is getting days? tough, dude. So the level four top option is my father's money has no bearing on my natural talents. I actually think he prefers Aiden. I love preferential treatment, and it's practical for a team to prioritize their best. I'm going to go with the top one. I actually think, uh, like, obviously there's this, I, I feel like my, my view on Devin has quickly shifted to, I believe he's dealing with some sort of medical issue right now, I, that, or, or some sort of, you know, substance abuse or whatever it might be, because, you know, we obviously saw that he's been involved in an accident. He's, you know, checked in at some sort of uh, a private doctor, whether that has to do with, like I said, substance abuse or has to do with whatever it might be. I don't want to speculate on what he's dealing with. But there is also that underlying issue that he doesn't have the faith in his father. And I, I feel like he is starting to compound issue after issue. So I'm going to pick this one and see what happens. It always strikes me as really odd. Like as if <laughs> the only reason that I'm first on the track is because my dad funds the team. You know, how, how is that an explanation? It's ridiculous. So how do you <sighs> That's a little bit of anger. This season based on your performance so far. If the car behaves itself, we can do well. We can only go so far with Aiden on this team. We can win the whole thing. I'm just going to say this one because I feel like that's the way he would think. If he gets a good car, he well, believes hey, he can win. They? So, uh, yeah, I expect us to do pretty well. If they can sort out the car this time around, I'll get them all the points their little hearts desire. That's all great. right thank you another round of interviews and the story just thickens more and more so that is going to be it for chapter seven and eight um so a promising start turns into a difficult end with devon having to finish the race with a compromised car obviously he didn't listen to the orders of slowing the car down we did as best we could it definitely they did a great job of making it feel like it was a compromised car um, but before we end this video let's just see if there's any post-race videos or anything oh we have a uh a aiden or Could sorry casper issue while some teams have had to put in overtime to make it work it looks like the early returns on this year's car proved that they were able to make strides during its development last year's mid-season upgrades also turned out to reduce required development of certain components this year so it was worthwhile exercise there's been some positive press attention surrounding our savvy decision making so i mean i i kind of touched on that it didn't feel as snappy as the car last year but it also didn't feel as bad as what we first got in the first portion of this game so devon's a great driver and it was simple misunderstanding oh this is devon refused to comment on what happened out there today speculation is rife what should we say just no comment i, I like all these you know there's obviously something going on and i'm going to treat it as such uh, i i gotta think casper is aware of that as well 
Um, but we're gonna we're gonna end it right there, ladies and gentlemen. We'll come back for chapters. Uh, what would, what would that be? Nine and ten in the next video. We'll go through all the news, the social email, any phone calls, things like that. And we'll progress to the next chapter. But for right now, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you guys like and subscribe to the channel. There's going to be a lot of Formula One content coming up as well as well as a lot of other videos dropping in the months of August and September. So make sure you guys stay tuned. I appreciate the love and support. You guys have been crushing it lately. We are past the 500 subscribers. We have applied to be a YouTube partner, which is a massive step forward for the community we're building here. So thank you guys so much. If you made it all the way to this, leave a comment let me know what you guys think's going on with devin butler if you've if you've played the game don't spoil on anything but i might let me know if i'm kind of on the right track or whatever it might be but we'll catch you in the next one guys thank you so much for watching and enjoy the rest of your evening bye guys